In my opinion, YouTube is one of the most untapped B2B marketing platforms. It has over 2.6 billion active monthly users. It's the world's second largest search engine and the most popular podcast streaming platform in the US. It's one of the best places that you can capitalize on both display advertising and search engine marketing. By that, I mean you can appear in front of your prospects whilst they're scrolling down the homepage, for example, or watching related video content to what it is that you offer. Or if someone's searching something within the YouTube search bar, you can appear in front of them at the moment in time they're looking for that content. It's the best of both worlds. You can capture demand and you can create demand all under the roof of one platform. And in this video, I'm gonna be running through different ways that you can create YouTube ads for your B2B business. So uh, let's jump straight into it. We head over to the Google Ads platform. And once you're all logged in, you can go across to Tools and go to Linked Accounts. Now, this is one of our test accounts, so we've previously linked YouTube up to it, but you go down here and you can type in YouTube and select out of one of 4,000 products which Google Ads connects to, and then just go through the process of linking your YouTube account. Once you've done that, you can go into Campaign. Now, if we click on this little plus button, you can click on New Campaign. And as I alluded to, there's a few different ways you can set campaigns up. But first and foremost, let's look at the campaign objectives. If you're running an e-com store, uh, which we're not gonna be going through in this video, you can ultimately create it for sales that you're going towards with that objective. In this video, we'll be looking at one of the objectives, which is leads. Ultimately, if you're looking at you know, generating more leads and more conversions or more quote requests, for example, through your website, this would be a great um, objective for you to go after. And the other two I'm gonna focus on primarily today are awareness and consideration and create a campaign without a goals guidance and show you the differences when it comes to creating your YouTube ad campaign. And one of the campaign objectives, which are really steering Google's direction for the future is under leads. And they've changed this quite a lot recently and I'm gonna go into a couple of the nuances. But before I go into that, first and foremost, some of your conversions that you've created previously will be listed down here. We haven't set up conversions properly in this account because it's a test account. Typically what we recommend is creating these through event um, and conversion goals in GA4 and then importing them into your Google Ads so you can keep them all in one place and then you have your primary and secondary goals. I'll link off another video where we go through and explain a bit more about those goals anyway. But you can go through and you can either keep them in or you can remove the goals down there. So if we click continue, you can then go on to video and it won't actually give you any more options down here. You just go through to continue and I'll show you how that differs from other campaigns in a minute. So you can go up here and name your campaign, you, any naming convention you guys like. We like to use it from, you know, naming potentially the agency or company or person who's doing it, even though you can see it in the change log it doesn't really matter. Then we can say it's going to be a um, custom um, audience or custom intent. Let's do campaign, which we'll get onto in a second. And then we can say it's going to be for law uh, SEO services. For example, say if we're promoting our SEO services to law firms, for example, and then we just put UK because it's a location. So just ultimately who's doing it, um, the type of campaign and audience that we're running it to. Um, I can go a bit more in depth on what type this is in a minute. Um, and then the type of service that we're promoting and then the location. So let's go down here and skip through a couple of these. We can go to United Kingdom. Um, or you can enter the locations, the territories that you're going after and type in the language um, that you like to, to target people for as well. From a bidding strategy, there's two main types when it comes to um, the lead objective. One is maximize conversions and one is target CPA. If you haven't got much data in your account already, I'd go for maximize conversions to start with. And then when you start getting an idea of the average cost per conversion, you can then set Google off and say, I want to try and get a target CPA of a hundred pounds, for example. This conversion data here is taken from the rest of your account. So if you're running search ads, for example, and you have conversion data, whether that's using offline conversion data or online conversion data, um, you're able to then use that within this account and it's an account level, not set a sort of a campaign level. So it takes that that all into account when it's running these, which gets quite smart. And one of the benefits of obviously running campaigns through Google and Google owned companies or Alphabet owned companies, should I say. Um, next here you can set a daily budget. Say for example, we set for a hundred pounds um, and you can also set a campaign total as well. What will happen is if you set a campaign total, um, it can ultimately adjust your spend throughout that time period. So it could overpace at the beginning because you're getting good results or it could sort of spread it out evenly depending on, on how it works. Um, let's keep it for daily budget for now. And then what we can do is you can set a 
date that you want it to finish or you can leave it to run continuously. With, again, the lead and the uh, more automated Google campaigns, unfortunately, you can't go and untick any of these options. So you will be running a, a, across um, video partners on the display network, which, again, may not be ideal for people doing that. If you've sort of gone through that process before, you know some of the placements. Site links, again, just like site links with search ads and other ads, just you can add these in, takes a more real estate, gives it more personalization and routes that people can go down to for relevancy. Um, but I won't bother creating those in this video. Um, and then we can go down here and create our new um, custom audience or custom intent audience. And this is where Google's sort of moving towards now. And if we go on to add an audience, Here's a test audience we've created recently, which was for um, law firm SEO. So what we did is some keyword research where we looked at the top uh, terms in Google that people were typing in to look or research or find information about a law firm um, for uh, well, doing SEO for law firms. Ultimately, this is a, a keyword research process, which is going to be quite similar to the one you do for search, but it's probably not going to be as extensive, but much, much sort of broader level. So let's just go into create a, a new audience and show you what you can do for some options. So you can name it here. So let's call this test two and you can create custom segments. So this is people based on their search activity. So if we go on here, for example, we can create the account we've done or create a new segment. So I can say this is going to be law segment. I can go and put the keywords in here, which I want to target and I can do my keyword research, which is pretty standard um, for anyone who's running search campaigns anyway. Um, but any terms which have good search volume, you can use the types of Ahrefs, for example, go in there, plug in your competitors, see which terms they're ranking for, and then potentially use that as a benchmarking um, activity. Or you can type in informational um, keywords such as law marketing, which is much broader, but ultimately is going to start, you know, gathering that audience, which is going to be slightly bigger for you to go after. So, you know, law, um, SEO for law firm for example, and you can add keywords into there. We recommend starting with around five or so keywords before then moving on. And down here, we can see people who browse different types of websites. So for example, you can go on people who are offering SEO for other law firms or talking about SEO or digital marketing for the law firms, and you can put the URLs in there. Now, this isn't gonna take just those URLs and people who have visited those URLs. It'll also go and take similar ones to this audience as well. And you can also use then different types of apps. So if I just save this for now, I can obviously then use this segment, which is test two, and you can then add your data as well. So for example, we can go in here and we can add website visitors. Um, again, not pulling through at the moment because we haven't connected everything up with this test account, um, which then allows us to start um, pulling in people that have hit our website and giving Google a, a better idea of the types of persona behind the scenes of people that are hitting our site. Um, and then you can go on to interests um, and uh, detailed demographics. Now, this is in-market segments and life events, which have always been something that Google have offered. Um, one of the ways we'd like to look at this now is if you are running Google search ads, for example, you can see this screenshot here, which means if you go into Insight and then go down to Audiences, you can see the audiences, whether it's Insight, in-market segments, affinity audiences, or detailed demographics, which are clicking or getting the most impressions for your ad or even converting for your ad. So these can be a really good steer for you to go after um, these in-market segments. And then you can go down here and you can exclude any audiences which you don't want to be going after. So if we save this now and go back, what we can then see is once this is being created, we can either use um, optimized targeting or not. Ultimately, this means Google can go out and find people similar to this. If you are going through and entering, you know, your keywords, the website, your audience data in market segments and creating that sort of larger persona and then letting Google and giving Google the trust to go out there and find those people, then it can work really well in some industries. I think that's the thing with most Google advertising, it takes context and sort of uh, hindsight and experience in similar industries to work out what will be the best move first without going through and sort of testing this versus some more of the manual approaches, which we'll get onto in a minute. Um, from advanced settings, obviously you can't go in and look at keywords, placements or topics anymore, which is obviously a bit frustrating. Um, but Ultimately, that's what Google's trying to do for you is it's trying to say that we know the people that have the highest intent based off all of this data from your conversion data, um, which we're going to be looking at bidding on. And then you can go in here and as per creating a YouTube video, just go and get the URL of the video of the account that you're connected to, enter it in there, and then it will appear on the right hand side for you to review along with your call to actions and, and your text and everything within there. And then you can go and click create campaign. 
Now, this is very much the way in which Google's going. In a few years, I imagine this is going to be probably one of the only options that you can go down for YouTube ads. So it's definitely worth playing around with this. If you just want to go in and test, what I recommend is creating one campaign per audience test group. So you don't have to split the budget because budget's obviously controlled at campaign level, not ad group level. So you can create one um, audience around just the uh, custom intent and one for in-market segment slash um, detailed demographics and maybe have three different ones um, and then work out what the result is based off those and which ones are providing you guys with the best return on your ad spend. Now let's go back um, and cancel this, go leave and click on the plus button again and go on to new campaign. For B2B companies, this is really, really quite cool. I think um, if we can go on to the awareness and consideration, what you can do is click on video and click on this new segment here, which is audio, which is relatively new for Google. You click on continue. And again, you can call it the same naming conventions we went to last time. You can add budgets in same as last time. Enter the location. Um, and you can obviously go through and you can select the, the devices and everything else that you want it to appear on. What you can do now is you can actually unclick video partners on the Google Display Network for this one as well, which some people are going to like because you know, ultimately you're not always going to get great placements on the display network, which is something that hopefully Google's going to be sort of steering away from if it's not providing you good ROI with the, the last campaign. Um, so what we've got here is untick the video partner one here. You can look at the devices you want to go on. A lot of the time, you know, a lot of people actually now watch uh, podcasts, for example, on their TV. So including TV is quite cool here. But if you want to keep it on, say, desktop, for example, TV, maybe tablet and play around with mobile. But again, you can work out um, which one works well for, for your brand using the data if you're running these campaigns, um, either in-house or through an agency. Um, rename your ad group. And the great thing about this is there's a few things. Same as last time, you can go into the audience segments. So I could go and add the same audience segments um, like Law for SEO, for example, that we've created. Um, or we can uh, do keyword topics. This is actually where you go through um, and you can choose terminated to your product or service. So you can actually target from a keyword level in this, which has been taken away previous campaign. The cool one thing about this is you can go on placements. Say, for example, I could type in law marketing and I could get all the channels and all the uh, single videos which are ranking top for that which have loads of views I can then plug all of those in um, to here to say I want to be placed on these videos advertising now make sure you don't do more than one targeting setting so if I chose uh, placements and I chose keywords for example then say for example there's not enough inventory to be placed on the placement section they then go to the keyword level and we start running just from keywords so this would then kind of become null and void because it would just be overtaken by keywords so just make sure you do one go through and you can test them individually um, but you can go through and do that but what we're talking about today is you can use the likes of something called video lineups and if we go in here you can type in podcast And if you go content for United Kingdom, for example, you can click on podcasts and it becomes video lineups and you can see podcasts here, which means when someone goes onto YouTube and they're listening to a podcast, which like I mentioned, is the one of the biggest um, podcast streaming platforms um, in the world now, if not the biggest, you can then start creating your ads for just podcasts. And for B2B, it's great because a lot of B2B buyers listen to podcasts and you can get in front of that person whilst they're engaged with the piece of long form content. If you want to know which podcasts obviously are appearing for, you can go into YouTube and at the top, um, you can just click on podcasts and this is the in-stream, um, sorry, this is the video lineups um, that we're talking about um, and it will appear on here. And one of the cool strategies I, I, I quite like um, as a sort of like a, a creative rollout is using retargeting. So going through and saying, I want to use uh, an audience segment, which is um, someone who has interacted with our business, who's been a website visitor, who's someone who's come from, you know, LinkedIn previously, for example. So everyone who's come to our site from LinkedIn, we can then next time, they go and listen to a podcast on YouTube, which a lot of people do, they can then get an ad. Now these ads for podcasts can only be, or audio ads in, in general, whether it's for music or podcasts, um, can only be six to 15 seconds, but they can be really great snippets. They can be obviously just audio, or they're gonna be sort of these same video ads like you'd create for the uh, traditional video ads, um, but a really cool concept, I think, um, and it's something that's only gonna get better and better. And I think it'd be really cool to sort of work out how you can appear on your 
um, customers, you know, most favorite podcasts and sort of bid slightly higher to make sure that you're appearing there. And finally, let's just go through and leave this and go on to the final campaign type, which would be create an audience out of goals guidance. Now, I don't typically recommend this, but um, some people like it because you get a lot more control because um, you can start using things like um, efficient outreach, which would just be lower cost bumper ads and skippable in-stream. You can choose just doing non-skippable in-stream ads um, or you can do things like ad sequences, which allow you to play ads in certain orders. Now, like I mentioned, we don't use this very much, but it does give you a, a bit more control over the type of campaign that you're running, the type of uh, inventory you're buying. So I'd say that lead is the one you have the least control over because it's being optimized for conversions and giving a lot of control to Google and I think across the board and from what I've been seeing in the industry it looks like it's getting quite good results and um, the second one is obviously the brand awareness using that primarily for audio ads I think it's quite great to be able to get the brand awareness out there from a uh, sort of layering that remarketing um, with the podcast um, six to 15 second ads or if you're feeling really um, enthusiastic about managing it yourself and you know can't let go of the uh, the manual uh, you can use the the no goal guidance for um, creating a campaign and uh, go, uh, go as crazy as you like. But I hope you guys found that useful. Last week, we created a video around how you can go and look at your competitors' uh, YouTube ads. It also includes how you can look at their Google ads, Meta ads, and LinkedIn ads as well. So hopefully you'll find that one useful as well. But until next week, guys, have a great one.